Welcome to Speaking of Influence, the podcast for speakers and professionals or anyone who wants to present with impact. Hosted by presentation persuasion coach John Ball. Remember to like and subscribe. If you're thinking of starting a podcast, there couldn't be an easier way to get started than getting started with Buzzsprout. They have all the tools and resources you need for starting a podcast and getting it out to all the major podcasting networks. Check out the link in the show notes and get your podcast started today. Welcome to the show and today I am very happy to have with me a guest who really embodies the phrase serial entrepreneur. When you hear about all the things that she does, you will be wondering how on earth does she manage to achieve everything she does and raise a family and do all the other things she does around that and has an events business and does speaking and hosting and so many things. We've got a lot to talk about. Please welcome to the show Tamika Martin. Hi everyone. Hi John. How are you today? I'm really good, thank you, and really happy to be speaking with you. We uh, we had a little go before, and the connection wasn't working out for us. So we are we have a good connection today. We've got good sound quality. It's going to be great. T- tell us a little bit for for our audience benefit about some of the things that you do professionally. Okay, so professionally, I head up a PR and events management company called You Create PR and Event Management Limited, and it's based in Nottingham in the UK. I've been running this business for almost six years now. It primarily functions in the entertainment industry, so a lot of our clients are people from an entertainment background. They vary from musicians to book authors to actors, um, budding entrepreneurs of brands it was quite exciting so yeah yeah it's quite versatile with the types of clients that we look after on the event side of things we have our own branded events such as jazz festivals we have um, an international annual women's day event that we run every year it's going to be five in march next international women's day right. and um we're cooking up all sorts of different ideas we have a group of creatives and innovators and we're always trying to think of the next best thing and and how we can you know start new initiatives we're we're also able for hire for various different events that range from um corporate events to charity events to private events so yeah just in a nutshell that's a little bit about what you create does um i also head up a uh, personal brand my own personal brand which is quite exciting called tamika martin and friends i launched that last summer july to be precise and went really well it was a free event. We had lots of different people come. It was invite only. So it was kind of like a VIP kind of vibe. And my host at that event was Kerry Katona, yeah. the um, winner of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, an ex Atomic mm-hmm. Kitten um, band girl member. So um, yeah, she joined me in the hot seat. It's a celebrity QA with entertainment um, experience. And we collaborate with various five star venues. Um, at the moment, locally, so just in Nottingham, but I'm planning to grow the brand, obviously, to the Midlands and then nationally and then globally. That's that's where I want to take this. So um, it is still baby stage, you know, stepping stones. And because of COVID, we've not been able to do any live events. So I'm now thinking of doing some stuff online, getting a few um, celebrity interest to come online and, and I have a go with them online at doing a Q&A. And then we get people, you know, from you know, our, our audiences that follow the brand to, you know, do some pop-up questions and things and make it a little bit fun. So that's yeah. that. Um, moving on, two more to go. I run a podcast myself, <laughs> Hit Me Up Podcast, which is available at the moment on Spotify and the Anchor app. I would love to get it on Apple and various other platforms as well. Sure. Um, this launched at the beginning of the pandemic. So March was when I initially first did my first recording on Anchor app. And it's gone quite well since then, to be fair. It's been listened to in six different countries and yes, it's growing. I've got a couple of sponsors and um, yeah, things are are changing. So um, I hope for it to evolve and, you know, to be, you know, the kind of go-to podcast. If you want to know about lifestyle, entertainment news, relationships, entrepreneurship, business, lifestyle, spirituality, a bit of everything in the mix. So it's nice that people can come to a platform and they can kind of pick and choose what it is, you know, they want to kind of vibe with and and, and gel with and get information and content from. So that's what Hit Me Up does. And last but not least, I've just launched an unincorporated organisation called Afro Education and History Tuition. And it is aimed at young children from Key Stage 2, Key Stage 3. 
that will be kind of like from year four up to year nine in um, secondary school education. It is like a homeschool model. So we're homing in on black history, economics, um, a little bit of science in there and biology, a little bit of personal development and um, emotional well-being. So that's what we're doing with that. It's we've launched it over the summer. It's been going great. We've got you know a good turnaround of kids that are involved and it's only um, available during half term and the summer holidays so it doesn't function you know in term time or, or any other time and we're going to be doing lots with the kids we're going to be educating them we're going to be taking them on trips educational trips here and there hopefully when we're getting the funding it will be be you know accessible so that the kids can go to various other countries to look at monuments and things like that and obviously learn a little bit more about about civilization in in, in other places of the world so yeah amazing stuff I, i'm exhausted just listening to all the things that you do and you, you do you do all these things and you manage a pretty full house at home as well right i do i have four children and a grandbaby on the way she's due in two ah. weeks time so very busy you are indeed. So I'd like to get into talking a little bit about the the event stuff that you do, because I know you do some some hosting and presenting in with that as well. What what led you down this path? Um, so my background isn't even in kind of entertainment and like, you know, like mainstream stuff and, and public speaking and all the rest of it. I actually come from a background of um, working within the youth justice system, to be fair. Um, did that for a few years tried it you know kind of cop the t-shirt didn't get bored of it I just thought about other things that I have about myself so I'm quite a creative individual very outgoing um, I like to try different things I love working with my community and I love kind of bringing something to the table that's going to inspire people so yeah I've kind of decided that you know what is what is it that I can do that can can touch audiences and I can kind of you know personal develop myself and and and, and get yeah. a bit creative and, and also I love the idea of being a businesswoman and, and and kind of earning my own income and earning my own freedom and and building on stuff I want to do as opposed to working for somebody else in the usual nine to five yeah. I got my first hand at trying this sort of stuff when I <laughs> landed myself a radio presenting um job before that I um, was just a casual guest on BBC Radio Nottingham as a news reviewer for about two years and then I joined a panel of people on a show that was called the Loose Ladies Show and that was on um, a Friday with Mark Dennison at BBC Radio Nottingham did that here and there just kind of casually and it really enjoyed the role a few people were listening in you know a few people wanted to ask me more questions about how I got into radio and, and what what is it that I do so different to what other people do when it comes to radio and I went on to a couple of other radio platforms as an interviewee and then landed my own radio show on an urban radio station called What's Hot Radio in Nottingham did that for four years tried lots of different things like hosting carnivals being a public speaker at various community events mm-hmm. and things like that and loved it yeah. And then decided, oh, actually, now that I've got a few contacts and I've interviewed a few interesting people and I've, you know, been around the block a little bit, how about setting up my own creative organisation? And that's where You Create was born. I decided to get into the entertainment world and, you know, started g- getting myself into kind of like visiting award ceremonies and then being invited to award ceremonies even end up going on tour by accident with Snoop Dogg and I've, I've done so much. <laughs> yeah, how do you end up going on tour by accident with Snoop Dogg? How does that happen? <laughs> well, what happened is I went to an event because I was networking at a concert actually and yeah. met some um, backing um, band members of the people that were performing at this event in Birmingham. Got speaking, they took a liking to me, what I did, what I was doing at the time and invited me to um, a gig that they was doing in London. So we went down to London just for this weekend, thinking, oh, it's just an ordinary gig. One of the guys took a liking to me and kind of was like, you know, I want to get involved in your business. I'm a musician as well outside of this, outside of being a backing, um, you know, musician. And so there's lots about me that maybe you want to tap into if you're doing PR and you work with music artists and all of that. Um, But I just need to add that I am actually a backing um, band member for Snoop Dogg and Pharrell Williams and all of these, like, predominantly Justin Bieber all these, and I'm like oh okay so I'm in London I'm, I'm now you know affiliated with somebody who's a band member of you know and backing um, musician for all these interesting artists and oh by the way we're here because we are actually going to be doing some gigs with Snoop Dogg I'm like 
oh, okay. do you want to stay? Do you want to hang around? And obviously we've got a hotel, we've got it all covered, BBC's paying for everything. We've also got the Graham Norton show if you want to come come down and kind of check that out. I was like, Snoop's going to be interviewed on there. I was like, this is crazy. Like, how did this happen? Stayed for the weekend, ended up going to BBC um, Radio One's big weekend down in Norwich. This was in 2015. Mm. And there you have it. I was a part of the team when went around with Snoop Dogg and his whole team and band members and dancers and the whole, you know, set up management and stuff. And it was it was amazing. I had a yeah. really good time. And it pushed me again to think, you know, this this was this came by chance, but what can you do with this in terms of your experience of it and, and you know, who you know and yeah, and what was going on at the time. And so yeah, I've, I've met several celebrities since then, but yeah, it's yeah. it's all part and parcel of what I do and what I love and what I enjoy. It's, it's a lot of good fun. So, so, to, so to ask you about, about that kind of experience there, I mean, it's very clear that you have great energy. And I think that's probably a lot of uh, why things happen. Like people who have good energy tend to attract people and be, you want to hang out, you want to hang out with people who have good energy. And yeah. so, so you, you bring that a lot. Is that like, how you just naturally are or have you found that that's something that you've developed and increased over time T tell me a bit about that no I, no I think John it's fair to say that I've got better at it so I think I've always had it I've always had that bit of magic and spark mm. um I'm very confident that like I said I'm very outgoing outspoken articulate um I think over time with the different various job positions that I've had and the roles that I've been in I've been fortunate to develop those obviously you know I've, I've done some um uh, professional development as well so I've gone and do a few courses and you know jumped into a few you know networking groups online and offline and yeah. got speaking to some really interesting people that do this obviously having a mentor as well being that I need to be accountable in business so business mentor is always going to be helpful and that's where I think I'm at in terms of being able to deliver myself the way I do. Yeah, I mean, you strike me as someone who would have no trouble going up to someone and just sort of introducing yourself and uh, saying, hi, this is me, this is what I do, and uh, let's uh, let's chat. And, uh, and a lot of people would have a lot of fear around that. And uh, so, so it's um, an important thing to be able to get yourself to do in life because we really do create our own opportunities. And I get the sense Definitely. that you have, you have very much done that for yourself and you've taken accountability for... Uh, your own development and for uh, holding yourself accountable to other people and to yourself. So that's all stuff that really, really steps you forward in, in life and business. So I want to ask you a bit more specifically about the presentation side of this. You mentioned you've done, you did some radio work, you've done some public speaking stuff. What was that like when you first started? Um, I can't really say it was daunting. I mean, that would be like the obvious thing to say at first for somebody that's kind of just dump, jumping in the deep end at something like that. But because of my confidence and because I am outgoing and quite bubbly, vibrant and very proactive in my approach with, with every, everything that I get involved in, mm. I guess it, it weren't that bad. Um, and then after doing it a couple of times, I guess, you know, you kind of learn on the job and I just, and I love it. And I just, it just, yeah, it just came naturally to be able to, kind of not think overthink things and not to feel daunting about about trying different things and, and the rest is history really great well what do you end up doing at events do you actually host and speak at the some of the events that you that you set up now i do um so depending on like the branded events, so with you create, yes, that, that would fit in under that umbrella. So like, for example, the jazz festival, obviously it's my event. I'm the founder. It's the Nottingham Outdoor Jazz Festival. We haven't been able to get it off the ground yet because unfortunately we was launching the event in May, which was when COVID was in full fledged flow. Mm -hmm. So we've had to defer that till next year now. But um, yes, I would be obviously opening that event, closing that event and, and, and all of that. Um, the women's event, I actually host and run those. So the entrepreneur collection, I head that up. So we have guest speakers come from various different backgrounds and different um, business backgrounds. And I'm one of the main speakers at that event. For Tamika Martin and Friends, the personal brand, obviously I am the walking brand. I am the brand. So I, I do the Q&As. I deliver those. I host the event. I manage the event. Being that I, you know, I'm an event manager, I head up Ucreate. And Ucreate manages Tamika Martin and Friends events. So... Yes, um, I did, I did, I did, it is. It, it does work. It sounds like a lot, but because it all works and interlinks quite nicely, there's quite a nice mm -hmm. flow. I don't feel like I'm borrowing myself to too many different roles because I'm kind of, you know, 
it all flows very well for you. It does, yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, so... Everybody crafted, that was. I'm mainly kind of thinking in terms of, like, I I did some event management work some years ago, and I know that, you know, I'm very much a sort of big picture kind of guy. So so Mm. I know that I have to work really hard on getting very detail-focused because event management requires a lot of detail focus, but you also have to have that big picture there as well. And... and, uh, did do you find did you find that you had to do some work on that or was was that a very natural thing for you to be able to switch between detail and big picture thinking there? No, I think it's a bit of both. I, I don't think you can just kind of go in with your eyes shut and think I know it all, you know, I've got the experience, I've got the know-how, I know what I'm doing. Give me a piece of paper or give me a list of strategies and objectives and I'll just swim through that. It doesn't quite work like that because every event is going to be different. Every client, you know, the deliverance of what you're delivering for your client, every service is going to be different. So you kind of still need to get the back end of what you're doing and you need to kind of, it needs to be tailored and you, then you need to go nitpick it with a, you know, fine tooth comb as to how you're going to, do the deliverable so for the event you know okay you might have the same basis and structure of how you would go about delivering that event but event events are going to be ranging from different types of backgrounds and, and styles so you you still need to have a brief you still need to know how to you know evaluate after what you've done and you kind of still need to do the whole kind of before and after thing when it comes to yeah. getting it all together so, as, yeah. as someone as someone who speaks <laughs> is that I couldn't really imagine doing the event stuff as well as doing the presenting and hosting stuff so that's that's quite uh, I'm, I'm super impressed when it comes to preparing yourself for for hosting an event I think this is something that people watching or listening maybe think maybe have done tried hosting for or maybe might end up finding themselves in a position where they get asked to host uh, an event or uh, um, something that's going on how do you go about preparing for that? So a lot of planning. So again, um, you, you you first, you know, depending on if your is your event or you're being hired to host an event or speak at an event or manage an event, um, you need to have you do need you need a brief. Um, you then need to kind of go away and make a project management plan. I would suggest doing that if you're familiar with that or you're not familiar with that. There's lots out there. You can Google project management plan templates. You can also, there's lots of other various different apps and things you can try, but they're really good to have. Um, we use Trello, but there's there's lots out there. You can go on, you can create boards, you can, you know, put in what, you know, the tasks are, who's going to be managing those tasks, deadlines, timings. Yeah, yeah. so, and obviously a bit of background information as to, you know, the to-dos and, 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 and what needs to be put in that content. So, yeah, you can, you can, you can manage it quite well, but I think you need that system in place to be able to kind of navigate and, 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 and you know, bring yeah. about, you know, it, it, at least it being able to execute that event, you know, with a 10-10 kind of approach. Sure, but more, more specifically than the, the speaking part of it, do, do you kind of just get up and ad lib or do you do you prepare pretty much what you're going to be saying? Is it all fairly well ordered out and uh, practiced? Again, some, some preparation, um, depending on the event. So, you know, I did a knife crime conference once in Nottingham and it had a, a lot of people involved in that. Again, it was my managed event. I had, you know, the council, the police, um, just general people from various different backgrounds, from youth groups, third sector. It was quite diverse in the way it was delivered. Again, because it was my event, I I had to open that event, speak at that event. I writ out a planned kind of approach as to how I was going to deliver my my speech. Mm. Um, that's really important. How are you gonna how are you gonna read that? Are you gonna kind of read off piece of paper, off phone, off the iPad, like you know, is it gonna be presented on a board or screen? Like what what are you doing? So all of these things you need to kind of you, you know, kind of bullet point as to how that's gonna sure. come to be. Um, at my celebrity events, because I'm a bit of a natural, it's kind of like still listing out what questions are you going to ask the celebrity you're going to be quite careful about what you ask what you don't ask be careful not to miss things out that you know your audience would kind of find appealing um Mm. in order to be there in the first place obviously they're not going to know you know beforehand what kind of questions you're going to ask but you're going to put stuff in there that's again for the next event going to be appealing to the people that turn up and 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 want to be involved in that that whole experience so there is some planning and some preparation definitely yeah, but it's not not necessarily completely detailed. It's like you allow a bit of room for uh, 
for you to add your own touches to it and oh, of course and else. yeah of course and uh, if you're doing if you're doing an event or you're speaking at an event for somebody else they would obviously let you know what it is kind of like what, what the event's about and what they expect from you and they would want to know how you're going to deliver that and that's a whole approach around that so I wouldn't really worry too much about mm. expectations because if you're doing it for somebody else they should be yeah briefing you as to how that should be delivered what what would be your your top tips for somebody who does get asked to to host an event other than what makes sure you prepare um what other pointers or tips could you offer um be yourself that's the first one be authentic people love the authenticity of somebody who's bringing something to the table because there's no point in having a structured deliverance as the same as Tom and Joe and Sharon down the road like you want to be you you want to you know the, the people are buying into you and what you're saying and you've got to be appealing so mm. definitely kind of be yourself um when it comes to nerves and things like that there's lots of ways you can prep for an event so it might be having an early night you know make sure make sure you get plenty of rest keeping well hydrated keeping well and um yeah kind of some relaxation things so it might be just something that's simple as reading a few quotes out of a book or on an app online or something or going on YouTube looking at how the people deliver their their style of um speaking at other events and yeah it's kind of doing all of that beforehand so you're kind of really prepared and obviously making sure your attire is you know correct and suited to the style of event yeah. so that you feel even more confident in your approach because obviously you know you want to look and yeah. feel good as well it's, it's not just about it's not just about the people it's about you how you feel when you're delivering as well so yeah, another good tip so yeah. that that's more around kind of being being yourself and being authentic yeah. I would also kind of want to stress that you've got to plan there's no sense in being told you've got an event next next Monday and just showing up and being there that's the worst thing you can do you've got the whole weekend you probably wouldn't take an event on speak at you know just over a weekend but you want to you want to kind of know what the event is who's going to be there what's the topics what are you going to be talking about how are you going to deliver that and yeah you need to be planning yeah, absolutely it. you know I, I sometimes speak with people who have years of experience presenting and hosting and speaking and they will they will say similar things and say you know make sure you prepare yourself well uh, as important. well as you can for the for these events don't just show up and think it's all going to fall into no. place you know so, that, so, that gives room for problems you know if anything's yeah. going to happen there's no there's no contingency there's no there's no plan b so you need to really i was going to come to that you need a plan b you need to have a contingency plan for if things do fail and <laughs> Not that's, so a well. good, that's a good thought yeah yeah, yeah I mean I, I can think of enough enough times when I've done events where things have ended up going completely pear-shaped and uh, Always yeah yeah it, it will often happen so having having those sort of backup plans but then you know nearly always at some point something's going to come up that you couldn't possibly have a contingency mm. for but uh, but a lot of it you can a lot of it you can so I think that's really really sound advice and also when you've got that, it, it doesn't become a case of uh, what am I going to do now? It just becomes a case of, okay, plan B. <laughs> you yeah, know that. Definitely. It's it's there. There. Yeah, yeah, ready and to go. But it's good to think about those things before. If you can, obviously you can control how that's going to pan out. If, you know, the audience or everybody else in the team would need to know, but the audience doesn't need to know what went wrong. It's kind of like what went right. Obviously, we're human. Like you said, there's all sorts of flaws and things that happen along the way, but you want to kind of mould it in so that it would just appear to be that there was, you know, it was managed quite well. There was no major issues. And if there if they were back end, then it gets, it gets addressed and, you know, mm. sort of quite quickly. The other thing that's really important is if you're doing you know, like a guest talk or you're speaking at an event and it would be really good to meet the team of that event or, you know, if you're speaking on behalf of somebody else to meet that individual, have a little quick kind of, you know, informal chat about expectations and if you have any questions or, you know, any apprehensions to sort that out before the event. Yeah, really, really absolutely. Good idea. I, I think that's generally a good idea, right? and you know I, I think it's often encouraged with when I do uh, sort of speaker events and the likes. Yeah. They always encourage you to get there early, meet the team, meet uh, whoever's involved in the event. Um, but certainly, if you're doing a, a professional hosting or anything like that, then you know if, if there's something going on the night before, go along yeah. and meet everybody and socialize, get to know the people who are, who are most important to know and. And uh, you know, it, it gives you an opportunity to feel more relaxed and to even discuss, discuss insider stuff that shows that you have 
made an effort and that you have connected mm. with that connected with their world because like mm. you are going into their world to to perhaps speak or host and present and so if it shows that you're actually connected in with that and that you maybe even can make uh, get a joke from somebody that p- people yeah. in the industry are going to find funny then great it's going to going to set you up for for sure um, so I'm curious about. I mean, a lot of a lot of your work is like, doing stuff that is working with uh, celebrities, people who are pretty well known, uh, as well. How how do you how do you find that? Are there any differences to uh, working with perhaps people who aren't so well known? Is there are there expectations that come along with this, or or is it really just like you know, it kind of depends who you get? Or no, again, I think presentation is really important. So even the way you you know open a first email to you know to an agent or something if you're you know trying to access a celebrity or you know like you know trying to you know tap in to get in somebody to come on your show or because you, you never really get to speak to celebrity mm-hmm. fortunately for me I've got a couple of contacts and friends that are on my whatsapp but it's not every day you have that um it's something that you build over time once you get to the point of being able to kind of be accessible to that that celebrity then again you know the way you speak the way you present yourself is really important the, you know for good measure they're gonna you're gonna want them to have a word of mouth to say you know i work with this brand or work with this this individual and it went really well i recommend them you know if they ever get in touch with you about doing an event you know i i i would definitely highly recommend you, you that's the go-to person in that field so yeah it's really important to keep the same structure all the way through with anyone you want to work with whether it's corporate world celebrity world business whatever um even on like a low level just a kind of ordinary joe blog you still want to you still want them to buy into you and and what it is you're you're selling that's your personal that's brand you. then right I mean, it that, is yeah the, uh, i spoke uh, with a uh, um, content uh, marketing expert a while back, uh, a guy called mm. John Experian, really good episode as well. And one of his things that he says, says quite often is that the content marketing stuff is about being the same shape everywhere. And, yeah. and that's like your personal branding. And that relates to very much to what you're talking about here. It's like mm-hmm. show up the same everywhere. And then people know who you are and that they know how to do with them. It's like, uh, and, and you treat everyone with the same level of respect Definitely. and the, same, and the same level of yeah, detail exactly. and attention. And, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's different hats, obviously, for different scenarios, but you still got to have that that basic, you know, level of you know compliance and and professionalism and you know again being authentic that's an interesting because i i know you you have a lot of entrepreneurial entrepreneurial interests and so initially when you were starting out was was it pretty much like a one woman show for you like you were trying to do kind of everything or or did you start out straight with thinking no let's get a team together asap no, it was a one woman band to begin with. Well, actually, with you create, I had another managing director on the team. So it was kind of like a dual responsible okay. type of outlook. Um, and then as time evolved, um, things happened along the way. And, you know, we kind of we kind of try that. It doesn't work. We try another thing. It works. It, it, we just move it around like a bit of a puzzle, puzzle um, set of pieces. And so for me, I think over time, I've got as I've got into more of a kind of entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit, I've decided that actually in order to avoid procrastinating and, you know, not being so proactive, it's best to get a team, a team that's, you know, agile, it works well, you know, it's, you know, for Matt, for me, creatives and people that kind of are thinking of the next best idea, that's my my idea of having a great team and um, a team that's ready for change and, and growth and development and expansion and stuff. So, yeah, fortunately for me now, the reason why I'm able to do the different business interests is because I have a, a team with you, Crete, and I have other people that are supporting me in my in my area of development. So that's the plus. That's great. And you said at the start, you've just been interviewing some new people as well. So you're still expanding. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I, I intend to do that with every single business model that I've got. So obviously, because um, with my personal brand, it is me. But it doesn't mean that I don't need to have a team. I still need people to help me when I'm putting on the event. You know, how, who's who's going to be styling the event? Who's going to be looking at the logistics of the event? Who's going to be, you know, securing the event? What, you know, is it going to be a joint effort with me in the venue? Or is it going to be kind of like me and my team are bringing in, you know, a whole array of different people and functions? So, yeah, yeah it's... I think uh, you know a lot, a lot of my target audience are business owners uh, as well. So um, this is good insight into into your mm. business and i think 
many people do try to be a one person show too much of the time trying to you know, play, doing the one person band and trying to play all the instruments at once kind of thing whereas you know really uh, to grow and to, to be able to scale up anything you do you have to be building and growing your team with with the right kind of people so yeah. that's good stuff but from from a sort of business owner perspective then what are some of the pointers or things that you would maybe recommend to other entrepreneurial business owners in terms of like how you have to show up and and how you step up to that sort of business boss role if you like because like you you are you are um ahead of a team yes um well you need to be very responsible <laughs> that's the first thing um because it's a lot of responsibility it doesn't matter whether you just do one business it's a small business it's a medium one you're a sole trader you need to be responsible so yeah you can't you, you can't be unprofessional you can't like you said just be showing up and just doing whatever and kind of being blase about everything you have to have structure um you have to have a list of goals objectives strategize what you're doing and have a list of deliverables and you know meet deadlines be really hard on yourself um you kind of need to clear a black backlog of stuff that get in the way so you know your normal day-to-day tasks and activities can't be being mixed in and kind of you know all incorporated into your business world it's kind of like keeping it all separate so yeah. personal family friends that separate thing to your business and your business objectives and aims. Um, really important. At first, I didn't I didn't learn to do that, but it's something that I've developed over time. Mm. Um, you, the structure is really important about how you're moving forward in terms of trying to advance and grow and develop your business. And um, for me, I think what I would say would be not only kind of keeping it all separate. You've got to you've got to have some kind of direction. So you've got to know where you're going to so maybe plan maybe the first 12 months or the first one to three years or the first one to five years or, you know, from five years to 10 years, what's that looking like? So yeah. continued, you know, professional development around that as well, around kind of time frames and, and, and boundaries and, and limits and, and, and knowing where you're going with that. Yeah, you've got to be able to point, point your ship in the right direction and, and head, towards, head towards something, right? Um, Easy so- said than done. You've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to learn yeah. the systems to know how to, 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 to do that. You, you do. And this is why I will often say to clients, you know, the, the goal isn't the goal that you set for yourself isn't so much about achieving it exactly as you say it now. It's really yeah. just about having that direction to go in and reaching some kind of approximation of that. It's like you might mm. you might set sail for America and find yourself in Brazil. <laughs> it's like, well, uh, you still landed somewhere and you'll make the most of it. Um, but uh, th- this is the whole thing of, um, you know, people get too, sometimes too attached to specific outcomes yeah. when, they, when mm-hmm. they set goals for themselves. And it doesn't allow the flexibility to actually deal with opportunities that do come up for you in that time, mm. which you might otherwise reject, reject and say, oh, that doesn't fit with my exact vision of what I'm creating. So no, and it's like, where well, actually it could be one of the best things that you could do. So as I say, mm having this direction to go in and and being flexible about okay it doesn't need to look exactly like this but this is what i want to move towards that's much better for for us because you still you're still setting off for something that you're going to achieve something but you're not overly attached to exactly what it looks like well if it looks close to that great if you get that exactly okay fantastic if you get something even better than that amazing And, and so if you, if you get too attached to it being one specific way you're going to find get very rigid about it and i think that often leads people to this sort of goal burnout kind of stuff mm. but i didn't get it and i failed because i didn't hit it exactly as i envisioned it it's like maybe you didn't fail <laughs> you know well yeah maybe you learned something from that yeah so it's really important to know when you're learning it might seem as a failure at the time but that's going to help you go on to you know develop and plan a little bit better the next time so yeah yeah you've got to to kind of you've got to kind of lose to win yeah absolutely for from failure failure isn't like uh really optional when you go into business there are going to be failures uh we, we clearly want to avoid the catastrophic ones but um, failures are part of the journey to success. They're not really optional on, on, on the road there, but you'll learn mm. from them. And they're the things, sometimes they're the things that you grow the most from or the things that actually really uh, test your mettle and test your determination for what Absolutely. it is that you want to be, do, have or create, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Very true. 
I want to ask you then, because you do you do so much and, and you have a lot going on in your life professionally and otherwise. Do you feel that now you achieve life balance? Because you said this is something you've worked on. Uh, do, do you have that pretty much how you want it? I'm getting there now. Um, I feel a sense of I'm getting there. So even though I've incorporated these new ideas and these new kind of entrepreneur goals um it, it's it's kind of like you know is this going to work out obviously you always think that when you set something up new you think you know the plan is for it to work out but is it actually going to stick is it going to is it going to go anywhere i feel comfortable and confident that the four business models that i'm actually you know i've incorporated and i'm working on are going to be successful and I've, I've set myself the time aside for those and and the patience and the you know the will to make those those work again back to my point about procrastination a lot of people start things they say I'm going to do it or they've got various different things that they're doing and there's too many buns in the oven and they're just not going to you know they're going to overbake it's not going to work but yeah. for me I've set up the structures and put the parameters in place to make sure each thing is being cared for and it's a bit like having a bit of new baby kind of you know making sure you're nurturing it and you know helping to help that grow and evolve into something so there's no point in not having that initiative there's no point in starting something and writing it on a bit of paper and leaving it there and saying no it will work it so it doesn't work like that it's a lot of time a lot of management a lot of patience and a lot of balance so um fortunately for me i'm able to do that and it has allowed a bit of freedom and a little bit more of a, a nice work-life balance yeah, it's a journey, right? I mean, I know when I first started yeah. out in business for myself, I, I left a quite comfortable career with uh, with the airlines and uh, and set up my business. And, and I was trying to do my set up my coaching business. I was uh, uh, training as an, uh, an event manager. I was uh, uh, setting up two different network marketing businesses. Doing the most, John, doing the most. Can, can you imagine how I was really just not moving forward with any of that? And and there was me wondering why, why, am I, why isn't something happening is like well this whole thing of well perhaps stop trying to make everything happen all at once and focus on one thing and uh, you know over time I've been able to build things up in in business but it takes time and it, it is a it process does. that you have to get yourself established first and then build mm -hmm. build upon that you, you can't just um, build a skyscraper without a foundation so that is so true and I think you because going backwards, I think when I first started with you, Create, it was kind of like, let's try and do all these different things. Just, I've, got, I've got a couple of the startups of business plans that never really progressed into anything. They're still there, but it's something that I can't really see viable or fe feasible to happen right now. So I've stuck to the things that are workable and, I, you know, I can, I, can, I can do. With you, Create, I think it's taken up to five years to get it to the point where I can do other things and have that make sense. Yeah. This is why I'm saying, you know, you need to look at the first 12 months, be realistic, be practical, the first five years. And then when you get past that, that bracket, then you can start looking into other ways of developing that business or moving on to other business or, you know, other, yeah. other goals and interests. So we're not always yeah. very good at being patient, right? We want it all, we want it now. <laughs> and it's That's like how it always starts off as well, to be fair, you know, it's something that happens. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad thing to want that, but the reality tends, it is always really the case that it's going to take time. And, and that's the stuff that we don't really like to hear. You know, we'd all, we'd all much rather that we have our Karate Kid montage and within no. five minutes we're a master. And it doesn't, just doesn't Back work. Back to the old saying, Rome wasn't built in one day. So, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. But it's, uh, it's one of those perhaps uncomfortable truths. Is now it's not, it's not what people want to hear. They, people... That's why people are attracted to like get rich quick sort of things. Isn't yeah. it really, it's like, uh, well, you can get success really quickly. And it's like, well, rarely. Um, it, it, success takes time. Success takes effort. And Re real success does. I yeah. mean, you know, people, people can get, get rich by chance. People can have, you know, things handed down to them. It you does know, you may, you may, yeah, you might, you might have been born with a silver spoon in your mouth and you've got, you know, lots of things coming to you once your great granny or someone pops off. But... For the, for the most of it, it is kind of like the work card ethos and then, you know, you kind of get what you what you put in. Right. Yeah. But the, the, this is really one of those whole things with success of uh, it does require a level of uh, stick with itness, a, a level of you, you need to want it enough to be able to weather some of the difficulties that you're going to have and, and you need to show up consistently and uh, and grow into the person you need to be to create that level of success and, and show billion percent yeah i agree with that as well it's 
really, it's really, really true. With, with everything that you do, why did you want to start a podcast as well? Oh, good question. There was, a, there was a, I think there was a mix of things with that. So it was lockdown. I was getting a little bit bored, I, I'll admit, because obviously a lot of things were on hold. A lot of things felt like they were being put on the back burner and it was sure. like, well, what can I do? With me being quite a creative person, some an entrepreneur, someone who's always thinking about the next best thing, mm. I thought, right, okay, so you've got radio experience, um, you've got a couple of contacts, you know how to navigate yourself on social media, you know, you, you're quite good with, you know, getting onto an app and stuff and just doing the basics. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna try this. I didn't really know much about podcasting, to be fair. I'm more kind of with the vlogging stuff and all that kind of blogging and stuff. It's not so different, it's not really. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really something that I'm kind of saying I really have the know-how about, but, you know, I listened to a couple of them. I, I liked what I was hearing. I thought, you know, I think I could do something like that. So uh, my first podcast is about being in lockdown and how that felt and stuff and, you know, kind mm. of getting people to kind of um, kind of relate to what I was saying because everyone was in the same boat, as it, whether you was a business person or you was, a, you know, a mother or a father or a teenager, you know, kind of wanting to play out. It was all there for, for somebody to be able to, um, resonate with so yeah I did it I did that then thinking you know I'll just try and see how it goes there was no branding around it or anything around it it was just literally let me just try it all out you know kind of upload something see how we go and then I, I kind of shared it with family and friends and you know through, through work people and people in the, in, in the business world and they, they were kind of like I quite like your voice I think you've got the gift of the gab and you've got the knack I, I wouldn't say there was no reason why I couldn't kind of you know do another one and make it into like episodes and seasons and kind of go for yeah, it why not the second point of it was, I thought it would be really cool to use it as a platform to obviously sell myself on what I do, and it right. makes sense. Um, get people on that in my world that kind of understand what I do, and I, I, I can understand what they do, and give them a platform as well. So it works really well in terms of being a business owner and being an entrepreneur. So um, that was another thing. Another thing was, I just wanted to have a bit of fun. <laughs> I like I like the sound of my own voice. Right. I like I like the sound of connecting with people and I like what that look, looks and feels like. So podcast is the perfect kind of paradigm to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew nothing about podcasting really when I started either. And, and, yeah, it's, right. uh, and, and uh, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I think my show might have grown a lot more, a lot quicker yeah. had, I, had I actually done the research. Uh, I spoke to someone just recently who had started hers and she'd very clearly done all the research and she mm. knew exactly what she's doing. She had a launch plan and all of this and she's grown really quickly. It's like, great. I, I just started mine on, on a whim. It wasn't not... What, Yes, long, long before lockdown, but um, it was an option and a project for my in my Toastmasters club. I was like, yeah, okay, let's give it a go, and I enjoyed it. So, okay, let's do this again, and then it just uh, okay, maybe one a month, and then it very quickly became uh, two a month, then one a week. <laughs> it's, yeah. really, it's really just grow, grown from there. But I honestly love it, I, I really do love mm, it. It's been one of the best things I've ever done. And, well, I, and I started out, John, at, 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 trying to do one every day. I've, thought to myself this is not going oh. to work for me with what I do <laughs> even yeah. though we're in lockdown out of lockdown it's not going to work so now I've reduced mine down to two a week so it's that's a huge yeah I mean daily is a huge commitment and I have some friends who are doing like daily podcasting and that you'll get a lot of episodes out quickly and stuff and and, and it can be a really good growth strategy but it's such a big commitment and and realistically you know, for me with with work and client work yeah. and traveling around and stuff it just wasn't going to happen so you yeah. know I, I'd like to be doing two a week and I, I tried that for a little while and I want to go back to it but uh, at the moment is uh, one a week is about as much as I can manage uh, but mm. I'm, I'm getting great guests on so so I mean that that that's something I'd want to ask you then who who would you really love to have as a guest on your podcast like who would be your oh, ideal I, I always say it every time Richard Branson I oh, the guy. why Richard I, Branson then I think we've got a lot of similarities, believe it or not. I just, I just the way his brain works and, and the way he is, his, his practicalities and his, his interests and things. I know it's not the same field of work, but just his whole kind of concept of building and making things work and, and, mm. and, have, and having various different interests and stuff that actually work and, you know, yeah. you know now he's you know, billionaire kind of thing. It's quite appealing. It's not about the money. It's about what he does. He's, he's coping mechanism is his strategies his focus his whole you know drive and passion to try and change the world with what he does it's not just let's build the next best business model it's kind of want to take the pain away from 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 people and give people something to actually you know 
yeah. try and choose. And so that's why he's built, you know, his virgin model and various other things. It's, it's so interesting. I, I like that. I, I really like a lot of things about how how he does business, and I'm sure you know he he's got into trouble a few times as well. And I know you know yeah. there may be some people who don't don't particularly love Sir Richard Branson, but I, I'm a big fan, and um, I know he's not perfect, but n- nobody is. Nobody um, is. But, but I love his playfulness, and that's one of the yeah. things I really like most. Like he he's I'm sure there are times when he takes business seriously, but he also is very playful about it, mm. and he has that life is an adventure life is exciting definitely that's uh, what's appealing to me yeah yeah and, and that that's what is really appealing to me because so much business culture is stuffy and you know stiff collared and uh yeah uh, yeah and, and overly serious whereas you know it's been I'm quite a cool. relaxed approach doesn't he yeah he makes it look easy he does make it look easy he does. Uh, you know, I, I think he, from from what I've read about him as well, he likes a more casual approach to business meetings and to yeah. meet people. And, and you know, if he's if he's genuinely impressed by someone, you know, he's going to really invest a lot of time and energy in them as well, which I really like mm. too. Uh, but also, he's he is incredibly involved in um, collaborative efforts as well. He's not definitely. He's not, you know, whilst you might sort of see the ego and the uh, the big sort of uh, ad things that he, you know, promotional events that he does sometimes. Uh, you and he creates see... a lot of opportunity as well, yeah. John. I think that's what a lot of people does. don't see because that doesn't get so so much publicity. But uh, yeah. But yeah, he does a lot of collaborations and, and opportunity creating for other people. And uh, mm. I think, you know, if, there, if there's someone uh, I would want to be like in that sort of world, he, he would be a, a, he's a great model. He is definitely, he's definitely someone that inspires me. He's definitely one of my role models. And Michelle Obama is as well. Oh, man. I do watch her quite closely as well. She's just launched a podcast. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm liking it. I've got a book at home, a book of quotes. And yeah, I just I just love her, her whole kind of like uh, initiative I, and way I of thinking. I watched her speech, uh, I mean, at time recording, it's just they, they, a few weeks ago, they had the uh, Democratic conference and I'm watching her, um, her the convention and her speech and that was so passionate and, inspiring I, I just a huge, <laughs> huge amount of respect for her I'm almost sad really that she's not that she's not running for office herself <laughs> I know and, and and you know I can see how her and President Barack Obama well, ex-president Barack Obama kind of align quite well because they, they just yeah they kind of just fit like a, a hand in glove kind of thing in terms of the way they are as people and yeah. I love that she's so humble and ambient about life it's just it shines through her as an individual you can see they, they they're are not very, a bit kind of overly you know dressed up or you know scripted or anything it's just yeah she's you get, get to really feel about if you read books and listen to her podcasts and things yeah. and you know look back at her previous works and things she's amazing they're they both incredible speakers yeah like they're, they're very I and mean, you you mentioned about the authenticity i mean i mean you very much get a sense that they, that they are they show up as who they yeah. really are and the, the authenticity comes through, but I find them both to be very compelling speakers. And uh, you know, I think uh, you know, for, for President Barack Obama, he got um, uh, part of his being elected was his speech making ability for sure. Mm. And, uh, and I've really never failed to be impressed by either of them when, when mm. they're delivering speeches. And that just fell. That that see that's 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 the catch there. So again, back to presentation and the way you you know articulate yourself and deliver yeah. it. It's kind of all in the in the, in the booths in the pudding kind of effectively way of yeah. delivering. I wonder what you'd have to do to be be invited as a guest onto Michelle Obama's podcast. Uh, we can dream. Huh? Oh, watch this space! Oh no, watch, watch this space. space! I get around. Oh, I get around. I, I think if anyone can do it to me, but I reckon you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to. I'll, I'll, I'll be, tune, I'll be tuning into that episode for sure. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> Excellent. So let's start to, to bring things to a closer day, but it's been a really fun conversation and a lot of insights as well. And, and yeah. I'm sure lots of people are, other than me are thinking, wow, you're, you're really impressive with <laughs> everything that you do and keeping your life organized. And um, you mentioned about coaching and personal development before. What would be, if you're going to recommend a, a book or a resource to people who, who are tuning into the show that might help them to advance their journey, what, what would it be? Um, 
to be fair, I mix it up a little bit. So with my um, professional and personal development, I do a lot of like affirmations. Um, mm. I look for motivational speakers online. So on YouTube, and um, there's some quite good ones on there. Um, a little bit of meditation as well is really good. You can do some of these stuff for yourself. There's two tools yeah. that are free that you can find yourself. And over time, you can start to implement them, them into your daily life. So mm. yeah, these are the kind of things I do for a little bit of kind of structure. And you can, you are in control about, you know, how much of that you take in how much of it you use some people like to do yoga there's lots of different things you can do um i don't have any specific or particular person again i just i just i'm just into daily quotes and things like that i look for these things i, I gravitate to this kind of stuff this is this is what i'm about yeah and um, speaking to people like yourself people that can can encourage and inspire you as well are really good just there's people around you know if you've got a professional you know um you've got a professional platform you're on like LinkedIn for example there's loads on there as well so you can kind of put in what you're looking for connect with these people you can send you links to books you know podcasts you know you name it and you, there's something in there for everyone and then you from there you can just kind of grow and develop so there's not really any easy kind of one kind of way of thinking for me when it comes to that it's just trying different things that help you to evolve. I get that, yeah. I like I like getting sort of daily quotes and stuff, and uh, I use like the Headspace meditation app. Yeah, that's um, Calm's good as well. That's an app as well yeah, on, uh, on the app. Store you can get. Similar one. I like the guide. Yeah, I find it very helpful to do guided meditations because uh, it yeah. helps me to sort of take that step back from uh, everything that's going on. You're like when you're sometimes struggling to clear your thoughts or like, yeah, like, some guiding the the meditation and your breathing and stuff. I find it very helpful. Rather it's than really good. Do it myself. Yeah. So I, so I appreciate them and and also the little speaky bits before they just send to you and, and so it's it's actually surprising how many people in terms of, sort of prof- personal and professional development are very um v- very much supportive and promoting meditation as part of their as part of their success journey and activities like uh, like yoga or you know, some sort of physical form of meditative or um what do you call it? Mindfulness activity. Yes, that's that another really, one. Really helps to ground people, and so so I love I love everything you're saying there as well. What, TEDx is good. That's that's a good good one to watch because you get lots of people on there that go and do lots of kinds of speaking, you know, performances, and there's, there's again lots you can learn out of that. Just little short, you know, snippets of like interesting people. So yeah, yeah. TEDx is something to subscribe to most definitely. I'm a big fan of TED Talks. Uh, I, I would love to do one one day, but who knows, maybe. And, Me too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, even if it's TEDx, I'll take it. And um, yeah, a fan, that's in itself a fantastic resource. What would be your closing thoughts, your words of wisdom that you'd like to leave people with today? Oh, um... one day at a time. Funnily enough, simple as that. But don't be too hard on yourself. Just each day, you know, again, you can learn things in it. There's so much, you know, I always say, and it sounds really harsh, but this is more for the adult kind of listeners, but mm. you kind of like sleep when you die, literally. That's that's how a serial entrepreneur person thinks. It's literally yeah. like, you know, while I'm alive and I'm breathing and, you know, there's, there's light and time in a day, kind of like just kind of whatever doesn't get finished, you know, leave, be there tomorrow kind of thing not not literally everything i'm not saying like if you've got like something that needs to be planned and developed and it needs to have a deadline by that day you don't, don't mean that kind of thing what about just things like you know like trying to try new things and stuff like that or working on something that doesn't have a time frame you're just working on something developing something you know mm. it's kind of like you know just each day that comes you know, don't be so hard on yourself utilize your time effectively manage your time effectively you know time is it's at the moment for me anyway limitless just just go for it and just you know have yeah. fun I, I, I think having fun is, is one of the key elements of all, all of this as well. It's like if you uh, if you enjoy what you're doing whilst you're doing it, and it doesn't mean just doing stuff that's fun. I mean, just being actually yeah. bring enjoyment into everything that you do, and yeah. uh, you, you'll find that you love and enjoy enjoy your day, and you want to do more. Then it's not going to feel like hard work all the time. It's going to feel like I get to go and do what I love every day because you start to love the process and and i think that's yeah. super important uh but yeah having that control it, isn't it yeah 
every every day is a new opportunity uh, and for, for growth and development and uh, yeah. and a chance to build on what you have done before and, and don't, instead of what, like what you're saying and don't waste time beating yourself up about what you haven't done move forward keep keep going keep moving forward keep going yeah absolutely Tamika, it's been a real pleasure speaking with you today. We've got a lot, uh, a lot of value from everything you shared with us. I love that. Thank you for That's sharing. What it's your, about. Yeah, thank you for sharing your time, your energy, and uh, and we we can all look forward to hopefully one day hearing you on the Michelle Obama podcast as well. That would be epic. <laughs> it will happen. I, I don't doubt it for a moment, Tamika. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, John. You take care now. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you can, leave us a review. It helps the show. Whilst you're here, why not get yourself a free copy of my new ebook, The Five Key Beliefs for Bulletproof Business Speakers, available from my website, presentinfluence.com. Also, why not come and find me on Facebook? Look for the group Speaking Influence. That's the place to come and get all the latest information and updates from me. Extra information, bits that I'm going to share there that are going to be exclusive for members of the group. So please come and find Speaking Influence on Facebook. I'll look forward to seeing you there. Next week, my guest is an incredible speaker, a funny lady. I had a lot of fun chatting to her and learned a lot. You will too. Her name is Donna Shannon. So make sure you like and subscribe to the show and don't miss that episode. See you next time.